A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us, that he has given us of his spirit. Moreover, we have seen and testify that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, <clears throat> God remains in him and he in God. We have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God and God in him. And this is love brought to perfection among us, that we have confidence on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. And so one who fears is not yet perfect in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, Lord every, every nation, nation on earth will adore, will adore you. you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. Lord, every, Lord, nation, every nation on earth, earth will adore you. you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, Lord every, every nation, nation on earth will adore you. you. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. After the 5,000 had eaten and were satisfied, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and precede him to the other side toward Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. And when he had taken leave of them, he went off to the mountain to pray. When it was evening, the boat was far out on the sea, and he was alone on the shore. Then he saw that they were tossed about while rowing, for the wind was against them. About the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out. They had all seen him and were terrified. But at once he spoke with them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. He got into the boat with them, and the wind died down. They were completely astounded. They had not understood the incident of the loaves. On the contrary, their hearts were hardened. The Gospel of the Lord. One quick observation first about the last line of the Gospel. It doesn't mean when it says that the disciples' hearts were hardened, it doesn't mean that they're evil or malicious or, or you know, closed in in any sense. What it means is they didn't get it, okay? Hardened hearts, thick heads. That's kind of the way you might want to look at it. What we do want to look at, though, is the juxtaposition of these two readings today. We are told in the first reading 
There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Okay, that's great. As C.S. Lewis put it, though, yes, perfect love drives out fear, but so do a lot of other things. Stupidity, alcohol, arrogance, you <laughs> going on, you know. So the fact that you don't have any fear doesn't necessarily mean you're full of love, okay? But for us, it's important also because we look in our hearts and we see that we, in fact, have fears, okay? It's the way it is. I'm not going to be as harsh as I think St. Augustine was when he said, you all are afraid to meet the Lord. You say you love him, but you're afraid to meet him. What is this? Well, partly it's because as human beings, we don't have perfect love, okay? Perfect love requires, I believe, perfect knowledge first. We don't have it. We don't have that perfect knowledge of God or of Jesus Christ or of the afterlife or any of those things. And so fear sets into us, even if it's a little bit, because we're not so sure. We're not so sure. God can love us perfectly. God has perfect knowledge of us. We are not God. We don't have that perfect sense of knowledge. Therefore, we don't have the perfect sense of love. Therefore, we are afflicted with fear. Even the disciples today in the gospel, afflicted in the same kind of way because they didn't get it. They know this man that they are following is something else, but they don't know what else. Not yet. Jesus knows them. They don't know him yet. And so they don't know how to react. They don't know how to react except that they react with fear. They had all seen him and they were terrified. Oh, Lord. So today... What we need to do, I think, is to just acknowledge the fact that our knowledge is imperfect. We acknowledge the fact that there are residual, or maybe even more than residual, fears inside us. What will happen when we finally meet the Lord? You know, is he going to smile at us? Is he going to look like he's disappointed? We've got all these kind of fears. But let's know also that God knows us utterly and intimately and loves us. Let us stand and pray.